So I was working with the cycloid shape for my class recently. The cycloid is the shape that's traced out by a point on a wheel that's rolling without slipping along the ground and it makes this nice little arc shape with these points. And I was looking at it rotating it around in GlowScript and I said, you know what, that almost looks like the edges of a Christmas tree. And so I wrote up a little code uh, that we'll walk through in just a second, but I wanna show you what the final result looks like. When you run this thing, it makes for you a Christmas tree made out of cycloids. So you can see on the side here to make the leaves, we've got a cycloid pattern going on. So it's a wheel rolling along the uh, along a track here, and you're just tracing out a single point along there. So that gives you the cusps that represent the points of the branches, and then the curvy parts are the you know the nice little space in between the branches. And basically, what I've done is I've rotated that shape. Uh, into six different directions here. So you get a nice three-dimensional uh, wire-shaped Christmas tree. I've also added some ornaments here. I've only added a few so that you can add more. And then I also have a star up at the top. Um, so you can take this code, you can play around with it. You can change the size of the tree. You can change the size of the wheel tracing out the cycloids. You can play around with it. Let's take a look at how this code works. The first thing we can do is set the dimensions of the tree. We've got a tree height, a tree base, and the radius of the disc. So this tree height is controlling uh, the distance from the top here down to the bottom. Uh, the tree base is controlling the width uh, from one edge across to the other. And then the disc radius is controlling the radius of the wheel that traces out these uh, cycloids here. So if you wanted to vary the size of your Christmas tree, all you really have to do is change these three numbers here. Then we have a function here to uh, create our leaves here, our branches here along the sides, because we need to do that six times. And so basically what we do is to set up a track for the cycloid to follow along. And so that's going to start up at the top. X equals zero, Y equals the tree height divided by two, and Z equals zero. And then the bottom is going to be the tree base over to the left, and the tree height uh, divided by two in the negative direction. So actually this tree base here is uh, it's actually twice the tree base. Uh, so this is a radius, not a diameter, just in case anybody wants to uh, do some actual math with this shape here. And then basically we tell the track what direction to point along and we just tell it to go from the starting point to the ending point. Uh, and then we have to create a disc. Now I'm making the disc um, invisible because we're not actually going to animate the creation of the cycloid, although we could. I might do that uh, a little bit later to show you what that looks like in the creation process. Uh, but basically this thing uh, has a few pieces. We have the disc itself that's rolling. We have a rod that represents a radius of the disc and then a marker point at the tip of the rod. And it's the marker point that's actually going to be creating the cycloids, but I need the disc and the rod so that I can actually trace out a cycloid. I could get the parameterized function of a cycloid like I did in an earlier video, uh, but this is, to me just makes a little bit more physical sense to do. And then basically we have an animation here. Um, for the next time I run this, I will take out the, uh, the I'll put back in the rate statement so that we can see these leaves animate along the way. But you notice is um, I'm animating along the same direction each time. And so really what I do is I make six different copies of this uh, of these leaves. Basically, these are set up as a curve object. Um, they're set up using uh, the, the curve function in, in vPython, so we're just appending these points to that curve function. And actually, I do not need this commented line anymore. There we go. So basically what I do, I take this curve and I make it six times. So leaves one uh, gets to make leaves, leaves two gets to make leaves, leaves three gets to make leaves, leaves four, leaves five, leaves six, etc. Um, if you wanted more, you could just create more and then you just have to rotate them around differently. And then all I do is adjust their axis. So if you recognize uh, this angle, this is a special angle, this gets the thing to rotate around by 60 degrees. So we start out going along to the left side, then we rotate by 60 degrees, then another 60, then another 60, then another 60, then another 60. So we end up with six uh, directions that our, uh, that our cycloid paths are pointing. And then I also have to adjust the origin a little bit. Um, there's no real mathematical derivation behind the numbers in this origin adjustment. This was really me uh, finagling it until I got the thing to match. And as we'll see in a second, they actually don't match up that well. That's why I have the star up top is to cover up the fact that their tops are not quite matching with each other. Uh, but basically, for each one of these, you adjust their rotation and then their origin so that you get them pointing in these six different directions. Uh, and then we create the star. We make the star up at the top where the uh, where the top of the tree is. 
and then we create a few ornaments. Now I've only made a few. Again, there's nothing magical about these numbers. I just wanted to get them to kind of hang below the, uh, the branch points here. So when you go to add your ornaments, uh, you can play around with the uh, position coordinates there to, uh, to get the ornaments where you want them to be. Um, let me actually run this now so that you can see what the cycloid animation looks like. So here we've got our, again, we're leaving the disc invisible, uh, but you can see we've got our path being traced along here. This is a cycloid, so you see it's, it's, it's well known for these cusps here, and then this not quite uh, semicircular shape up here. So here we've, uh, we're about done at this point here, we create one of them, and now we have to go back through the same process to create another one, but it's creating it along the same point, so you don't really see the animation going on because it's going along that same point. But then once it finishes tracing out another copy of this, it will rotate it, and so it'll it'll pop out to a different point on the screen. So there you have it, it rotates and pops out there. Uh, we'll see another one pop out in just a second. I'll put this next part in fast motion for you. And you can see up at the top that the starting points do not quite match, which is why I'm grateful to have the star up at the top to mask that. And so there you have it. Uh, you can see why I like the star being there because you saw how the uh, points there don't quite match up. So you can play around with this uh, at home. Uh, the link to this code is available in the description below and you can customize your own cycloid Christmas tree. I would love to see the visuals that you create with this code, so uh, please share them in the uh, description below or uh, on Twitter at Let's Code Physics. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful holiday. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.